the nature of news has changed where 10, 15 years ago, uh, you could just worry about the print paper. Uh, but that's not how readers read. Readers read on a real-time basis. And we have a number of different products and things that, that we're both doing that we can talk about a little bit later. Uh, but we, uh, more than ever, are spending more time, um, I'd say maybe 50-50, maybe almost a bit more uh, online. What's, what are we putting up online now? How are we approaching things online? And then we're really integrating as much as we can iPad uh, thoughts and, and uh, design into what we do too. So it's, it's chaotic. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. If you think about our, the nature of what we do, we produce content. Producing content is not really our problem. We produce a lot of original content every day. We have people all over the world that do that. The big problem is can we deliver it to the readers in a way that they want it, right? So we used to think that the way was only in the printed uh, paper, and that still is a big part of what we do every day. And Two million people is the biggest selling newspaper in the US and one of the largest in the world. But the fact is that some people want to consume the, the content differently. So it's no different from Coca-Cola producing cans, uh, glass bottles, and, uh, and, and big plastic bottles or, or, and stuff that they put in pubs, right? So the content doesn't really change, and, and we can tweak the content to suit the, the, the medium, but we need to have as many platforms as possible to deliver original content. So we have the paper, we have online, and now we are about to launch, we, we, kind of, we, we have launched a, what we call a stream, stream of stories. A stream of stories looks very much like, ours is called Market Pulse, it looks very much like a Twitter feed, so it's like a, a receptacles of, of all our content, meaning all the markets and money and investing content that flows into a dedicated stream which you can access online with a specific uh, website and URL, and you can also access as an app. So at that point, if you only want to know about markets and you only want to know about investing, uh, and you are really interested in those topics, you'll be able to see everything we produce in chronological order and scrollable in chronological order, including videos, graphics, and everything else in a very easy to access format. And we think that that's something that people will want to do, especially as the consumption of media converges towards the phone or the, the, the smartphone. And that's where we expect most people to consume this particular product. TweetDeck is uh, it's a great resource for reporters. Twitter and Facebook are We've gotten some great stories out of there by reaching people certain ways. But I think um, if you guys are interested in the news business, it can be kind of destructive in a way in that people are just like taking in information. And every minute you spend on Twitter is a minute you're not actually calling someone or meeting someone in person. And this sort of gets back to the sales thing we were talking about earlier. If the best reporters are not looking at the tweet deck. The best reporters are on the phone. generally have to give before you ask. Um, you know, sometimes a stranger will call you up and say, can you do this for me? It's like, well, no, like why? I have no relationship with you or, or, or I'm just not interested. But if, if I call up uh, and say, hey, you know, there might be things developing. Um, when we get together, I, you know, I, I might have some information for you or some, something that would be interest to you and, and you develop a relationship where you give before you, I mean, it's kind of salesmanship 101, um, but it's kind of shocking how oh, people don't um, take on that, that role. You know exactly how the news business works, so we like scoops. Uh, we like stories that are interesting. We like to get it before everybody else. And uh, we like stories that tell us something that surprises us, right? And, and will surprise our readers. So th those are the ones that immediate, immediately make us kind of sit up and, and, and take notice. Um, and, um, and then the other thing that we like, of course, is access, access to your client. So, so we can ask the questions that we're interested in and, and uh, hopefully get something that is of interest to our readers. People send an email and they think that's enough. And, oh, did you, did you, uh, you know, but sometimes they'll call, did you get my email? And it's just, I feel like sometimes it's just kind of lame. Like that's the best you can do. Like I'm not interested in what you have to say, but like show me that you care. And, um, and sometimes like, they do have something that I care about, you know, but uh, it seems that people have, have lost the, um, sometimes the, the will and, and the urge to, to really advocate for, for who their client is. Unfortunately, the finance and, and investing is inherently global. And so we need to remind ourselves all the time that you know, we have readers who are interested in, in things going on outside the US, that there's a lot of stuff that's happening outside the US, that markets and investment flows and trade flows are just global so we need the, that's the issue that I think is probably 
is the is the bigger kind of big framework issue that sometimes gets gets lost. You know, it's very easy to get really worried about a 500 million dollar market cap company because it's a U.S. company, whereas in reality there's some stuff in you know, some big Chinese company that maybe nobody's ever heard of that is doing really interesting things. And that's where we really we need to be ambitious and look for those kind of stories. I think where we tend to waste our time is writing news that's already known. Um, if it's on the internet, it's already known. Um, and I want to try to push our people to be, as Francesco said, to be ambitious, to have high aspiration, to dig, to be enterprising, to tell people things about the world that they did not know before. And, and you, you identify a key tension to what we do, which is you know, there's stuff just happening all the time. Um, but we have to free up enough time and space for people to do that. Mm -hmm.